This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Friday, December the 21st. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, the umbrella body for trade unions in Barbados warned Thursday that the labor movement is currently under threat due to government's ongoing retrenchment program. Outspoken President of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados, Edwin O'Neill, cautioned that the threat is compounded by utterances from some sections of the business sector that workers make adjustments immediately because of the economic crisis, while capital suggests they be given more time. But it is clear to you and all other Barbadians that the labor movement is under threat. And it is about stealing your results, STWL, yeah? and... Um, I race to those challenges. Uh, Cali and I'll play dead. Some would want you to think so. But um, no, we're going to first take on these challenges and occupy the space that the moral high ground allows. Why do you say it's on that right? Huh? Why do you say it's on that right? that the uh, are in the grip of recession now. So anything that... Um, Labor, anything that you're cutting labor, you're, you're, you're cutting the very mem membership of the trade union. Switching his focus on specific priorities for 2019, the C2SAB president said his organization must continue addressing retrenchments, growth of the economy that hopefully translates into jobs, the stability of growth in the economy, and a general improvement in Barbados. How do we intend to do that? Help to build a tighter and stronger Congress? Continue to give assistance, both technical and moral, to the affiliates and look forward to the new year in spite of the gloom with our optimism. In other news though, the Barbados Pharmaceutical Society is calling on government not to leave it out of plans to introduce medical marijuana to the country. Stating that he supports medical marijuana, BPS President Derek Catlin, however, suggested Thursday that government should first decriminalize the drug. This issue is among the society's priorities for 2019. In terms of continuing education, um, for like the mandatory re-registration of pharmacists, because that's still in, um, that's still in get implemented, even though we got a new minus, a new administration from from there, um, what else are we looking at? I think that's my top ones. Um, we know medical marijuana is coming on stream because we keep seeing it in the media. So I hope, um, you know, that everything will be in place in terms of, um, you know, in terms of pharmacists being more involved when it comes to that and not just from a doctor's perspective. The worst fears of Joseph Liverpool became reality when around 3.15 on Thursday evening, his brother, 68-year-old Roy Liverpool, was found hanging from a tree in a gully meters behind his home at Campion Castle, St. George. The elderly man had been missing for nearly a week following a short bout of illness with which he suffered in silence before vanishing and later being discovered lifeless by one of his neighbors. His brother recalled the moments leading up to the discovery. When I was just about to turn a phone around 3.30, uh, when I stepped inside my neighbor's car, um, my friend, the next door neighbor, called and told me, well, he saw my brother in a tree and he looked funny. So I said, well, I want to go to the funeral. But then afterwards, I, the, one of the ladies told me, well, Liverpool, you can't go. You best you go and check it out and see. Because seeing as it is missing for these days, you must go and see well exactly well, what happened. So that's when I come, and I didn't even take out my clothes. I still had it on, and then after he led me away down to the gully where my brother is, I see he got on a shot that formula, so I know it had to be he. So I said, well, look, that's my brother there, and I was really shocked and stunned to see him in that condition. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. A tough talking Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, has threatened to displace telecoms providers Flo and Digicel if they refuse to drop their prices in line with the state-owned company. In fact, the Prime Minister insisted that if pricing was not on the agenda of a meeting requested by the two international telecoms entities, he won't be meeting with them at all. I cannot see how they could be selling one meg for $150 uh, per month when APOA is selling 10 megs for $75. There's something fundamentally wrong about it. And if indeed they want to meet, they will have to put that on the agenda and give it an undertaking that will reduce the pricing. If they do not wish to address that issue, then there's absolutely no need to meet. Antigua and Barbuda's telecoms market is unique in the region. APOA, the state-owned entity, unlike most islands, is a major competitor with the very services that the two international companies provide. If Prime Minister Brown is to get the reduction in prices, then APOA will be an important tool in government's arsenal. So we're not even depending on flow and um, Digicel to provide, a, a, let's say, an affordable product, a good quality affordable product. APOA, PCS will do it. We'll raise the funds and we'll make it happen. And if they do not respond, then they will be displaced. And on the global front, U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday insisted that Congress include $5 billion to help build a wall on the southern border with Mexico as part of legislation to fund the U.S. government, a position that raises the threat of a partial federal shutdown tomorrow. More in this Reuters TV report. Clear any measure that funds the government must include border security. Has to. Hopes for avoiding a partial federal government shutdown over the U.S. holidays thrown into doubt and confusion Thursday after President Trump said he would reject a short-term deal to keep the government running into early 2019 unless it includes funding for his signature border wall. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan delivering the news after meeting with President Trump at the White House. He will not sign the bill that came over from the Senate last evening uh, because of his legitimate concerns for border security. So what we're going to do is go back to the House and work with our members. We want to keep the government open, but we also want to see an agreement that protects the border. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You could also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Now you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.